स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया recall a little bit uh, so quite small recall okay given a problem let's just solve the homogeneous problem yeah? and then we will dive into the non homogeneous or i mean maybe we talk about this okay so let's say you are given this problem laplacian of u equals to f in omega and u restricted it to the boundary is zero yeah this is called if you remember this is called the dirichlet problem the dirichlet problem okay I mean, of course, it's called a Poisson equation. See, this equation is called Poisson equation. This equation, yeah. So uh, let me give it like this. I mean, maybe Laplacian of u equals to f. This equation, only this equation, is called the Poisson equation, right? Poisson equation. But I mean, if you take this equation, yeah. So, but uh, but let's say this equation, Laplacian of u equals to f in omega. And you are putting this initial condition. Let's say u equals to g, yeah, or zero. I, I mean, it's not a big problem. But essentially, the data is given only on u, yeah. If that sort of thing is there, this problem will be called a Dirichlet problem. Okay, sorry, it's Dirichlet. Dirichlet problem. Okay, it is named after the mathematician Dirichlet. Now, and Let's say you, you can also have this kind of problem, yeah. And uh, the method which I'm showing, you can actually modify the method to uh, deal with that this sort of problem also. Del u del eta, yeah. So this is outward normal on the boundary uh, g on del omega. Okay. So basically delta is the outward normal at every point on the boundary. So del u del eta that is equal to g. On the boundary, so this is called a Dirichlet problem. If the data is given on the partial derivative and not on u, then this problem is called a Neumann problem. Okay, it's called a Neumann problem. So today, what we are going to do is basically look at the Dirichlet problem. So let's say uh, let's call it a G. Yeah. So minus uh, let's call it a. Uh, it does not matter. I mean, you can take minus, not minus, but let's just call it a minus. Huh? See, the thing is, this this f is arbitrary, right? So uh, I mean, if you are not convinced, you just change f to minus f. So Laplacian is equals to exact f, you know, some some minus f which is g, uh, which is h. Yeah. So uh, it does not matter. It's just a convention which we use minus Laplacian of u equals to f. Okay, now the point is this: we want to solve this equation, right? So you, you remember, given a OD, what are we trying to do? So uh, the our quest is this: our quest is, our quest is to address the well-posedness. Okay, let's say the axial one well-posedness of one, right? Well-posedness of one, yes. And uh, in that respect, what did we saw? We saw that I mean, you can use maximum principle to show that the stability is there, right? Yeah. So for small change in the initial data, the I mean, the problem, the solution changes a little bit. Yeah. So the stability. So uh, this is the recall. Huh? The stability question, stability, or I mean, this um, change under the perturbation. Stability uh, can be addressed. Can be addressed. Addressed, okay. Stability can be addressed using maximal principle. Yeah, but please remember this thing: maximum principle. Most of the maximum principles which we did are valid only for bounded domain. Yeah, I mean some are for unbounded domains. So you, you can prove those. Yeah, but the pro maximum principles which we proved are only for bounded domain. Yeah, and so stability can be addressed using maximum principles and. Uh, there is another thing called the uniqueness, right? Uniqueness. So uniqueness, we have seen that uh, you can use uniqueness is there. Uh, so you can use uh, energy methods for uniqueness, energy methods, and what is there? Moreover, you can also use uh, maximum principles, right? Maximum principles. 
So th those things are taken care of. Now, the only thing which is remaining and the most important thing is uh, how do I find a solution for this problem here? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me mm, clarify this thing more. So essentially, what is the question now? The question is, question is existence. Existence of minus Laplacian O equals to F in omega and U restricted to the boundary is G, right? Now, for our case now and this case, we actually assume that F can be, you know, F and G are smooth, yeah? So, don't worry about what is the regularity of F and G, they are smooth. And what about omega? Omega, so where, where omega, yes, is omega is of course is a subset of RNA, yeah? there is nothing to say. So, omega is open, okay, bounded, very important here. Yes? So, this, uh, uh, what I am going to do now, uh, that for that, omega has to be open, bounded, and the boundary of omega, del omega, is in C1, yes? Yeah? Or, I mean, you can also say omega is smooth. So, basically, the domain is smooth, which means that the boundary is C1, yes? Yeah? Okay. So, or I mean, we also say that the smooth domain. Okay, this is basically saying that this is a smooth domain. Okay, right. Now, uh, what I want to do, I want to find an existence of this problem. Before I go on doing whatever I'm trying to do right now, huh, let me make some small remarks. So, please keep this uh, thing in mind. Remark. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct something called a Green's function. Yeah. For, for a particular domain, for a given domain, for a given domain, domain, there exists a Green's function, okay? Green's function, okay? Which can be utilized, which can be utilized, utilized to find solution of star. Is this clear? We will show that. Yeah, we will do all that. Don't worry about it. So, we will write down a formula of what Ux will look like, right? The explicit formula of Ux based on f and g. Okay. So, uh, if you are given a domain for that particular, please remember this thing, for that particular domain, you can find the Green's function. And this is a theorem, right? That you, for a nice enough domain, you can actually show that there exists a Green's function. Yeah. So that is there. I mean, we will do that. We will show that. So, in, but in reality, but in reality. So, basically, you may say that, yeah, then for any domain, I can just find a Green's function and write down the explicit for a formula for this thing, right? So any solution of that will look like this. You do understand what I am saying. See, Green's function, once you, for a given domain, yeah? I mean, take any domain. Let's let's just say that the domain is a ball, yeah, with center at origin and radius one. So for that given domain, let's say you found out a Green's function, and with the help of that, you have just found out what the solution US looks like. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Now, and since you know that the solution is unique, you can say that is the solution which you are looking for. But the problem is this. See, for that particular domain, yeah, uh, for the unit ball. How do you find the Green's function? That's the question. Huh? But in reality, what happens is if if omega does not have nice geometric properties, okay, geometric properties. This is very important, okay. Geometric properties. So in some places you will see that they start uh, constructing Green's function out of nowhere. Yeah. Most of the places where you can see that, I mean, does not have any motivation of how those Green's functions are coming, yeah. And most of the times they are like, uh, you know, it's like, it does not, it's not based on any logic, yeah. You just, I mean, try your hand on something and get uh, the Green's function, yeah. And uh, most of the times you won't find, that's the point. See, Green's function exists for a C1 function, that's for sure. It exists, yeah. But finding an explicit Green's function is almost always impossible, you understand except for a few nice domains. Yeah? If omega does not have a nice geometric property, and I can't specify what sort of geometric properties I'm talking about right now, but uh, we'll have some idea about what this, this means. Yeah? Then, then finding an explicit Green's function, finding an explicit Green's function 
green's function is almost always always impossible okay now you may by some who can prove for some domains you can get it yeah but generally speaking it won't be easy i mean not easy i mean is kind of an impossible task to do okay so uh, with that in mind please uh, uh, i mean let's start with uh, finding at least for some problems that we can find right at least do that yeah so first of all let us show that there is a green function yeah which i mean solves our problem okay let's just call that problem star yeah so this is star right okay we want to solve this problem we want to find a ux how does the ux look like okay so uh, proof yeah so basically the derivation i am doing the derivation of green's function green's function right derivations of green's function now um, so let's say um, i am starting out with a u which is c2 omega bar okay there is nothing special about this u i am not saying that this is laplacian u equals to zero and all that nothing yeah it's just an arbitrary function yeah is an arbitrary function so you start with any arbitrary function which looks like this clear okay once you do this then what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to employ a similar tactic which we did in the last class yeah um, to uh, for you know the convolution thing which we did last class that sort of thing so basically we'll fix a u we we'll fix a x in omega okay and epsilon greater than 0 such that b x epsilon is contained in omega okay and we apply integration by parts on let's say we call it omega epsilon yeah which is omega minus b x epsilon okay why we are doing it to be clear right now so basically what are we are doing is this let's say that's your omega okay this is your omega and that's a point x okay take a small neighborhood of x let's say this is x yeah that's uh, epsilon neighborhood yeah i'm just throwing this part out and this is your omega epsilon right this is your omega epsilon omega epsilon yeah so i want to work on omega epsilon right now what i am going to do here is this see uh, i am going to use integration by parts but for oh, on, in this domain huh? um, in this domain for which functions u of y okay u is a function of y okay see this x is fixed i am fixing uh, fixing an x in omega yeah and for that i am using integration by parts on this u which is a function of y right now and the fundamental solution if you remember p of y minus x okay and now i am i am sure you have some idea of why we are taking this uh, deleted neighborhood yeah because uh, y when y is equals to x p blows up right so we don't want to, to want that thing to happen so in this omega epsilon you see y if i am starting out with a y in omega epsilon that can never be i mean y can never be equals to x so p is well defined here right and of course u is always well defined in everywhere in the domain so it's not a problem yeah so i can use the integration by parts and once you use that what happens let's say omega epsilon u of y laplacian of yes yeah, uh, c of y minus x minus c of y minus x yeah laplacian of u of y dy clear so this is equals to integral over the boundary of the omega epsilon yeah u of y and del p del gamma of x minus y okay and uh, minus uh, maybe i don't know maybe uh, let me write it like this okay and uh, here also let me put it like this minus p of x minus y okay del u del gamma of y d f y okay so this is just an indication by part I, I i just took two parts and put it together okay 
I mean, nothing, nothing much, right? So once I have something like this, okay, uh, gamma I didn't specify. Gamma is the unique outward normal on del omega s time okay that's that's your gamma okay now um let's uh, look at uh, see so there hence hence let's call this thing as a it's a big expression right let's call this for now let's call this an a and this expression as b okay so what do you have i have omega epsilon a dy yeah a of y of course a of y dy equals to so this is a of y and this is b of y yes this is a of y and this is b of y and that is equals to del omega epsilon of b of y d s of y okay so now let's break this part yeah d epsilon y so this is see what is the boundary of epsilon y epsilon y is this interior point interior points right it contains of the interior point so the boundary is of course the boundary of omega plus the boundary of this ball right so uh, it's basically the boundary of ball which center at x epsilon uh, b of y okay let's call it b uh, b tilde because ball i am writing as b so let's say this call it a b tilde b tilde b tilde is this expression yeah, with the big one so b tilde of y ds of y okay plus uh, the integral over the boundary del omega if you remember the boundary is this boundary the boundary of omega epsilon is this one plus this one right okay so i'm just breaking it up like that and uh, b tilde of y ds of y clear now now let us look at this expression huh? omega epsilon uh, del b x epsilon del b x epsilon phi of y minus x del u del gamma of y ds y okay this expression i want to calculate what happens to this see b tilde has two expressions right b tilde is this one right so i'm just starting out with this one right I, i'm not touching this one i'm just starting out with this this is, this is phi times del u del gamma and integral over the boundary integral over just this one i have also this part to take care of but let's just stick with this okay for that what do you have see uh, del u del gamma u is a c2 omega bar function right yeah u is a c2 omega bar function so this is continuously see u is a c2 omega bar function and this ball is contained in omega yeah so u is continuously differentiable yeah so on the boundary of the ball yeah there is a maximum which u is attaining and that maximum i can just take it outside so basically this is less than equals to the maximum of del u del gamma okay on uh, b x epsilon sorry del b x epsilon yes the, that i can just push it outside and once i do that i am left out with x epsilon c of y minus x dsy clear that is what i have left out with now see what phi so essentially if i'm taking y from uh, this yeah so, see i'm doing this integration yes such that y is on the boundary of this where is where does y lie y lies on the boundary of the ball centered at x and radius epsilon and i want to integrate phi of y minus x here so as you guys know e of basically y minus x is some function r of mod y minus x right yeah. because phi is a radial function here so if it is a radial function what happens is it's basically a constant on the ball right i mean y minus x this is constant there so essentially i can you can just take take the maximum of this phi outside yeah okay so uh, this is if you take that particular thing yeah so essentially what i'm trying to say is phi if you are taking y from the boundary y minus x is some something epsilon yeah y minus x is epsilon so essentially what is happening you are basically integrating one by or i mean if you want you can just you see if y is never equals to x 
I mean, uh, you can also think of, I mean, see, there are many ways of doing this thing, yeah? You can also think of it like this. X is not equal to Y, okay? Because X is in the center and Y I'm taking from uh, on the ball, on the boundary of the ball. So X is never equal to Y. There is always an excellent distance between this, okay? So uh, this is always defined, well-defined, yeah? This is, and it's a continuous function. Uh, so you can also take the maximum outside. So basically, maximum of this and maximum of this, let's say that's your C. Uh, let's say this is your C and I'm again taking maximum of um, C, let's say, yeah, I can take that outside also. So again, this is on the same thing, yeah, and uh, you have the integral of del B uh, X epsilon dsy, yeah. So if you take the integral, that's basically the uh, a surface area, right? So that will look like epsilon power n minus 1, okay? Surface area, that's epsilon power n minus 1, uh, of course, there some constant is there. And that is getting absorbed here. Yeah, I'm not writing all that. So this goes to zero. Yeah, as epsilon goes to zero. That's quite a evident. Is this clear? Okay. Now, um, what we have is this. So also, also integral over del b x epsilon. Okay, uh, u of y. The other part. This is there. The other part is u of y del del gamma of phi. Right. Okay. Uh, so u of y del phi del gamma of x minus oh, sorry y minus x ds of y clear yeah? okay now what exactly is this thing if you remember from the last class you remember we we did this kind of exactly this sort of calculation here yeah? so what did we get we get something like this yeah i'm not doing this part again sy and which goes to u of x yeah, if you remember uh, while proving that the convolution, uh, convolution with uh, um, C and S that solves the Poisson equation, yes, in Rn, yes, when doing the last calculation, this is the last part of that calculation, yeah, if you remember, please go through that if you don't remember that, yeah, so um, this is also true, as a certain test, of course, yeah, as a certain test, we did the exact same calculation, I'm just using that, yes, I'm not doing anything special here. Okay, so once you have something like this, uh, then therefore, therefore the formula which you have is this. You see, this is u of x. Yeah? If you just put it together, yeah, let's just put it together. This is u of x. This is going to zero. So essentially, you see here, this term will be there. Yes, yeah? this term will be there. From here, you are only getting u of x. Yes, yeah? because one is this part b tilde has two parts one is going to this is going to zero and this is going to u of x yeah so essentially i can write it as u of x u of x is equals to integral over the boundary over the boundary phi of y minus x uh, del u by del gamma del u by del gamma of y minus uh, u of y del phi by del gamma of uh, y minus x, yes, and d s d s y, okay, minus integral over omega phi of y minus x, okay, Laplacian of u y d y, okay. So this is what we are getting, right? If you see where is, where is it? Yes, we are getting this. Why? Because what happens to this term? This particular term is zero, right? This particular term is zero. Y is never is equals to x. So Laplacian of phi, this uh, this is the fundamental solution. This is always zero. So essentially that is gone. I am always left out with the minus integral over omega epsilon uh, phi of y minus x Laplacian of u of y dy. So omega epsilon as epsilon times zero becomes omega. So integral over omega only this particular thing. Yeah, that, so that is what I wrote. Where is it? You see, that is what I wrote. Okay. Okay. So of course, and and this. So let's call that as two. Okay. So and two is valid valid for all u in um, C two omega bar and x in omega. Yeah, you can do it for any x in omega. It does not matter because you. Uh, for any x in omega, you can always find a ball doing that, right? Because omega is open. Okay. So 
here you see what is happening if you know let's let's just assume that if you know what laplacian of u is in omega so let's say that your f yeah phi is already known to you phi you are already know because phi is a fundamental solution right it does not change it so essentially you can just calculate what is integral of omega uh, integral of this particular thing over omega once you know what laplacian of u is yeah and that is given to you so basically it is given to us that laplacian u equals to f and u equals to zero uh, u equals to g equals to boundary right if you look at the star see if you look at star for star laplacian u equals to f is given to you so just replace that there and u restricted the boundary is g it is given to you so let's see this this function this holds for any u in c2 right yeah so uh, what i am going to do is i am just going to write down here if i put it there you see this laplacian of u yeah this is f minus laplacian u equals to f so replace it by f this already we know so we can calculate this let's look here c we already okay let's look here u on the boundary we know if this is g and del phi del gamma on the boundary we can calculate because we know what phi is we can just calculate what del phi del gamma is okay what about this one phi we know but del u del gamma this is a problem right del u del gamma see we know what u does on the boundary we don't know what del u del gamma does on the boundary okay so uh, we have to somehow eliminate this uh, particular expression and um, uh, then we can uh, i mean go through what we are trying to do so this is where we are just trying to construct a greens function so to do that what we are going to do is we are going to introduce introduce a corrector function okay a corrector function a corrector function so that is given by phi of x which is phi x of y phi of x which is phi x of y and it solves solve the boundary value problem okay it solves the boundary value problem how does it solve it does this laplacian of phi x equals to 0 in omega okay phi of x is equals to uh, phi of y minus x on the boundary okay so what we are going to do is for a fixed x so for so this is for a fixed x in omega what we are going to do is this. see we are going to fix a x in omega and for that we are going to introduce a corrector function okay which is phi x given by phi x of y okay so for every please you know, understand this what we are trying to be here we want to eliminate this del u del gamma term yeah to do that we are fixing a x in omega yeah so once we fix that x we are introducing a new function based on that fixed x which is c x of y and such that laplacian of c x is zero in omega and c x is the fundamental solution of, uh, evaluated at y minus x on the boundary is this clear now let's apply the integration by parts again once we apply integration by parts we of course get this here let me write it down it is uh, phi x of y laplacian of uy dy equals to integral over the boundary del omega um, u of y d c uh, sorry del del phi x by del gamma of y minus uh, phi x of y del u del gamma of y ds y okay okay so basically i am just uh, using the integration pipe to write this thing okay i, I hope you understand where this is coming from yeah so this is just uh, whatever we did earlier this is the same indication by so this is just this formula yeah this 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 formula laplacian of px is zero so i am not writing that part and except that everything is same okay i am just writing that particular formula you see okay so uh, of course not for that function i mean using i am using that formula but for this function c of x and q okay once i do this thing so let's say this over del uh, omega Yeah, this will look like u of y, u of y, mm, del v x del gamma 
of y minus cx at y is equal to capital y minus x okay del e by del gamma y ds y clear you have this now you see what are, what is our point our point was to eliminate this particular term del u del gamma at the point y on the boundary and this is the term right c y minus is del u del gamma on the boundary yeah so if i add this term and this term then they have to will get cancelled out yeah i want to eliminate that only so adding this thing uh, so maybe yeah so what we are going to do is now now uh, we want to add those two terms and to do that i mean we want to make it a little simple that's all yeah now we define uh, so so now we define you understand what i'm saying see if i add those two terms this term is gone right if i add this particular term and this term i want to eliminate this term so basically if i add this expression and this expression together that term is gone okay and i want to do that and i want to write it in a more compact form yeah and that is why we introduce a new function so we define um, greens function yeah this is what we call the greens function greens uh, function okay mm, for the domain you see greens function is not for anything it it is only for the domain omega okay is g of xy we always write greens function as g of xy so this is equals to this is by definition the fundamental solution at y minus x please remember the fundamental solution is defined in whole of rn yes and that is why i can just write it like this times cx of y okay so this is what x and y is in omega and x of course not equals to y because otherwise this is not defined right so this is a green function which will be defined now once you define this thing then adding let's say call it let's call it so that's your 2 right this is your 2 yeah and let's call it 3 uh, okay so adding 2 and 3 2 and 3 we get what do we get we get uh, u of x is equals to minus integral over bound, uh, the boundary u of y del g i am just writing it down yeah please calculate this thing it's not very difficult to uh, do i mean it's very easy to do please check that part that's all uh, dsy okay minus integral over omega g of xy the plus you know u of y and d okay so this is for x the omega okay that is u of u of x uh, of course here where where del g del gamma of x comma y this is given by uh, gradient of g at the point x y now when i am writing gradient of g i mean it is with respect to y okay so essentially g with respect to y that's all okay times gamma y you understand this is g with respect to y okay right so dot gamma y and um, of course the gamma is if you unit out or normal i'm not writing all that gamma okay let me write unit out for normal whatever the domain is yeah so in this course i mean please just keep it this in mind whenever we write this del g del gamma kind of thing you will always understand it's always understood that this is the unit outward normal okay unless otherwise treated okay so uh, that's the thing now you see once so basically what i'm trying to find say is once you find this g yeah you can just replace this g here and you can you know you find what u of x is and we're done right yeah so let's 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 write down the representation formula representation formula this is called the greens representation formula okay representation formula okay so what it says is uh, if if u is in c2 omega bar okay uh, solve solve star solve star then u of x okay is written as minus integral over omega over the boundary g of y del 
जी डेल गामा ऑफ एक्स वाई डी एस वाई प्लस इंटीग्रल ओवर ओमेगा एफ ऑफ वाई जी ऑफ एक्स वाई डी वाई क्लियर ओके आई जस्ट आई जस्ट रोड दिस इन सी लैप्लाशियन ऑफ यू इज एफ राइट माइनस लैप्लाशियन यू इज एफ सो दैट इज वाई दिस इज प्लस प्लस एफ टाइम जी यस माइनस इंटीग्रल ओवर द बाउंड्री यू ऑफ वाई times this so this is remaining on in del g del gamma i am just writing and u on the boundary is g so i am just writing it like this and that gives you a representation formula for um, any any x in omega okay and uh, so uh, essentially what we did is let me again just recall we wanted to find the, the solution of a green function uh, sorry the solution of the fozo equation right with the dirichlet boundary data and to do that what we did is we found out a green function so the main important thing here is to find this indicator function what is the indicator function yeah to find this uh, sorry the corrector function yeah the corrector function once you find the corrector function like this so the important thing is see if u if omega is c1 this is easy to find right this is always true it's not a problem for any u in c2 if omega is a smooth domain this is always true yeah you don't have to worry about it the only worry is once you find a corrector function you have to find a corrector function for that omega yeah now it may look like a not a very difficult thing to do but it actually is the most important thing which you can i mean this is the difficult part yeah So to find a corrector function, here I defined it like this. But in real life situations, if you have to solve the problem explicitly, you have to find the corrector function explicitly. You understand that is going to be difficult. Yeah. And once you find the corrector function, you just define a Green's function like this. I mean, there is nothing special actually. I mean, you can't uh, g. I, I just defined it just to make it short. That's all. So once you define this thing, you do realize that what happens to g on the boundary? It is going to be zero, right? G on the boundary of the domain is going to be zero, yeah. And uh, so you just have to find a G which does this, and then you just uh, write down the representation formula in terms of this function G. Okay. So one small thing. Uh, so a remark, remark, and this I want you guys to do it yourself. Okay. I mean it's just some calculation, but I hope you can uh, do this. This is called a symmetry. symmetry of green this is green function na huh? symmetry of green function so what does it say it says that g of x comma y yeah this is equals to g y comma x yeah this holds for all x y in omega such that x is not equals to y is this clear okay this is called the symmetry so essentially it is saying that if we change x to y or y to x does not matter it remain it does not change anything okay it remains the same so uh, at the, you guys have to check it yourself please check it yourself check it yourself yourself okay so please do that and uh, this is just a property of a green function okay so once you do that you are done now uh, in the next part what we are going to do is we are going to see how to find a green function for a particular domain okay so with this we are going to end this uh, lecture